Welcome to the Midwest Renewable Energy Fair 2014. As you well know, if you've ever attended the Energy Fair, you know the power of human connections. Well, Touchstone Energy has put that power to good use in their community solar project. This large block, seen from the air in southeastern Wisconsin, is one of the many solar community projects they have attempted. And the way community works is pretty simple. Individuals and businesses buy panels or large banks of panels for the array. The money produced by the solar panels is deducted from their energy bill each month, providing ROI and eventually tax-free income. This is a pretty good deal. You don't have to have solar panels on your roof. And you don't have to take care of them or worry about them for 20 years. This community solar system and other great tour de force leading projects like this are provided by Dairyland Power Cooperative. They're leading the way in Wisconsin with many innovative and community-based energy-saving projects. And another great project put on by Midwest Renewable Energy Fair is this community project whereby kids get to build their own solar-powered cars. They are charged by this solar panel. And then they are raced, and the kids who have built the cars then receive prizes like trophies and cash money. It's a pretty good deal for everyone, and it's lots of great Fun. That happened this year, too. And speaking of cars, let's check out this lead sled, or we should call it a lithium sled because it is powered with lithium ion batteries. Its monster electric motor takes it to all sorts of extremes of speed and agility. Obviously, it's an experimental electric race car that has room for four and is powered by a huge bank of those blue lithium ion batteries seen there on the driver's floor. This car gets the equivalent of 207.5 miles per gallon gasoline. Let's just listen in on this uh, interview with the owner of the car. Wind and your solar heating in your cars. And, and we were just talking to another electric car guy earlier, swapping information about how to improve different bits and pieces. And I want to put a solar system on my shop roof. So I'm going to go talk to some guys later about how to do that the right way. What does renewable energy mean to you, and why do you think it's important? I would say renewable energy is that important to me. I think it's important to us as a society. Uh, at some point, it's not going to be called renewable energy. It's just going to be sustainable energy. There's nothing renewable about the oil that we use or the gas we use from the ground. Once we've used it up, it's gone. Uh, some people will argue that, oh, we've got another 100-year supply or 150-year supply. I think we probably have an infinite supply of oil if you're willing to pay it per gallon of gas. Once it's up to a thousand bucks a gallon, there'll be someone willing to go out to try to find that last little drop to get it. However, is that going to help the rest of us? Is it going to keep concluding the atmosphere? Are we still going to be able to breathe? The earth will be fine. Will people still be here? I think when it comes down to sustainable energy, smart energy, that's what we need to look at. And I think the automotive, I know the automotive industry is going to be a big part of that. And real close to our lithium sled, we find this beautiful little experimental yellow three-wheeled car called the E-Bird. Kind of named after Big Bird of Sesame Street fame. It too, of course, is electric powered. You can see its little motor there in the front. The owner is selling this as a kit package, which you can build yourself. Pretty cool. Also nearby, we find a gentleman charging his C-Max Ford car. It is a plug-in hybrid, so it gets as much of its propulsion that it can from electricity, and then uses gas once the battery has been depleted. Closing the hood and then the charging hatch, we later learned that this car was owned and displayed by our own favorite Dairyland Power Cooperative, charged with evergreen renewable energy. Pretty neat.
Another thing that were on display this year at the Midwest Renewable Energy Fair were charge stations. There was a variety there for sale and for demonstration. This one's the standard charge plug adapter that you would find in most public places. And it's the one that I use on my Volt. Next to it was the fancy schmancy charge controller for the Tesla. It is quite a different plug, as you can see, and it is very unique. And, of course, it charges at a rate much faster than the standard public plug. Here's an example of the battery that these chargers are charging. This one came out of a Prius. It's nickel metal hydride, and it's made up of perhaps hundreds of these individual cells. And they are removable and replaceable. Therefore, all of these batteries are repairable. And nearby, we found a fellow displaying various types of lithium-ion batteries and charge controls for lithium-ion battery types. He discussed some of the finer points of lithium-ion battery charging in a jam-packed presentation later that day. And what we learned from him was that lithium-ion batteries are really great, but they need special electronics, like this lithium-ion battery balancer. Let's take a look at his presentation. We're going to give you just a little bit where he talks about these controllers. The relay and board. And it's all controlled by this little beautiful gizmo here, which is a uh, cell log. It's very inexpensive, but it's about $20. And if you want to build your own system, this is where I suggest you start, because this can be programmed to run uh, eight cells at a time. So there's your 20-volt system. All you need is one of these little guys, and it has an alarm output that you can design to turn a relay or a contact. We really had a hard time leaving this demo area, which is a new addition to the fair this year, because we needed to explore these electric lawnmowers. And they must run on batteries too, so we found a perfect comparison with these green eco mowers. We're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison. The little battery on the ground is lithium ion. Orange battery is lead acid. The models cut about the same, but the one with the lithium battery runs twice as long on a charge and has only about a quarter of the weight of the orange battery. I'm thinking the lithium version is way better. And here's a lithium powered moped. Looks just like a gas powered one, but it needs no license nor insurance. And it's just as fast and as much fun as the gas version. That's the removable battery pack. It's light enough to carry with you like an extra tank of gas on those longer trips. There's the power. It's a wheel motor. You really got a kick out of the emergency pedals because it's really a bike. Okay, listen up. This next demo could save your health or at least save you from a headache. The jar has regular gas, 10% ethanol that sat for two weeks. And you can see, even after shaking it up, there are separate layers of who knows what kind of hydrocarbons in there. This next jar is well-aged E85, not recommended for use in lawnmowers. We went down to Madison and we told them this and they said, well, it doesn't matter, we're promoting natural gas. The last jar was 90 proof alcohol. And what Jeff was trying to explain to the folks at the Capitol in Madison was that yes, with a few modifications, any regular lawnmower can run on E85. Not this gooey E10 mess. This regularly used mix will produce exhaust emissions with such elevated carbon monoxide levels that it would be toxic to anyone pushing or riding a mower running this stuff. Whereas the carbon-less E85 produces almost undetectable carbon monoxide levels in the same engines. How'd that look? Jeff had a workshop to show how to modify any more to use E85 with ordinary duct tape. Perhaps saving the savvy more from getting a big headache from carbon monoxide poisoning while using his antiquated 
gas grass clipper. Did you know Organic Valley also makes fuel? Noted for organic food, they also make fuel for farm trucks like this one. Or even tractors like that one over there. They make biofuels from flax and corn and other biomass products grown by their farmers that grow their milk and other vegetables. They sell it or trade it back to their farmers for more food products. What a great deal. Some byproducts include animal feed and glycerin for soap and medicine. Anyway you look at it, it's local and sustainable gives organic farms and their producers freedom from imported oil and chemicals. All of these products and byproducts are made with a press, one like you see here, that extracts oil. And they have it in a full-size, ongoing demonstration in this trailer every year at MREF. Okay, so we're running out of time and material here, so I urge you to do E85 in your gas more, or better yet, get an electric one. These new lithium-ion green clippers work even better, reducing your carbon footprint and air pollution. Oh, but I smell something cooking. Can't leave the fair without sampling some good old solar cooked brownies and these great examples of home built solar ovens. And this roundy one looks particularly efficient. This year's episode has a sponsor. No, it's not a car company or an EV charger, but a great producer of graphically appropriate charge station signs. Low cost self adhesive 4x5 sign is perfect next to your charger outlet, perhaps 20 amps, and dedicated to your car. Also, offer a larger 9x10 version for wall mounting. And if you have a Volt, there's one that covers your charger's indicator lights perfectly to really dress it up and show its purpose no matter where you are. These great signs and other cool EV accessories are available from Half Off Closeouts at Amazon.com. Just search at Amazon for Half Off Closeout Store or search EV Charge Station Signs. Be sure to check back at Create Space in a few weeks for our next show on commercial and residential solar EV charging. You can learn how easy it is to solar charge your EV at home or at your business. You can watch past episodes of the Midwest Renewable Energy Fair at YouTube. Check them out on our Get Green TV channel.